as China sends first civilian astronaut to space, Zhengzhou 16 mission. New concerns rise. It's become a norm to criticize any space achievements and branding them military. After all, China's new Tiangon station could be the sole in-orbit outpost for scientific research after the expected end of operations for the International Space Station in 2030. China and Russia have the weapons to target America's most valuable assets, our satellites. Outer space is the next battleground. These balloons have gathered intelligence, and this program has been going on with President Xi's direct knowledge. The head of Space Force says U.S. commercial and military satellites are routinely harassed. China has developed a space weapon that can creep into the tailpipes of enemy satellites where it would grab on and hide, waiting for the right time to blow up. China says they, they just have to leak a memo. It doesn't even have to be true. Leak a memo saying they want to put military bases on Mars. We're there in 12 months. <laughs> The United States sees space as a new frontier. It's, it's very clear that space has become a warfighting domain. We're in the middle of one of the most fundamental changes in the character of war. And what constitutes an act of war in space? Does the United States have the anti-satellite weapons to deter China or Russia, or if necessary, to defeat them? Okay, yeah. We can cooperate and work together to achieve our goals. Uh, he's making very clear, he's sending a message. The world order as it has existed needs to change. To make it clear to any potential adversary that the risk and the cost of aggression far outweigh any conceivable gains. Chinese development of a space station, advanced satellite capabilities, and lunar exploration missions all raise geopolitical tensions. Is China challenging existing dominance of space powers like the United States and Russia? Is this part of a wider geopolitical competition? But who exactly is making scientific advancement and who is actually preparing for war in space? There are already more than 5,000 satellites in space, while most commercial, but can also serve purposes in intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, communication, and precision weapon guidance. China is putting up satellites at twice the rate that the U.S. is now. Correct. Uh, and at that pace, by the end of the decade, they will replace the U.S. as the preeminent power in space. When you look at you know, the hypersonic missiles, when you look at satellites with robotic arms, just how much of a threat is China? Well, China is a tremendous set, uh, threat, as you uh, uh, noted. Now, I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that they will be the leader in space by the end of the decade, but they're on an incredible pace. Whether it's um uh, jamming or, or, or harmful interference in the RF spectrum, laser dazzling, cyber attacks, you know, cyber probing and cyber attack. In November, a Russian satellite targeted and blew up another Russian satellite, creating a massive orbiting debris field. China conducted a similar test in 2007. U.S. commanders believe China has deployed a satellite with a robotic arm to reach out and grab other satellites. And Russia has nesting satellites loaded with offensive weapons. But how should the U.S. respond with Russia and China testing offensive weapons in space, blowing up their own satellites? These tests, to be sure, are reckless and they are irresponsible. Simply put, these tests are dangerous, and we will not conduct them. That was just silly. China and Russia couldn't care less what our stated policy is uh, with regard to things like that. Um, we need to be working on real policy that provides defensive capabilities to protect our satellites from their offensive uh, endeavors. While it's well known 
that the U.S. monitors adversaries from space since, well, nobody really knows. Reconnaissance satellites were always a closely held secret. The U.S. government did not even acknowledge the existence of the National Reconnaissance Office until 1992. All of a sudden there's a space military activity? No. This has been going on continually. The existence of the Space Force really is this, it's, it's an entity that was just simply behind the curtains of the U.S. Air Force. It's been there all along. It's all been there all along. And they just say, let's park the curtains, pull it out. Oh, Mike, oh, Zoe, so you were there and you, oh, you put up the GPS satellites. The, the GPS is a military project for navigation. Space Force has nothing to do with lasers or aliens or spaceships, and I wish it was cooler. Space Force gives GPS for free to the world. Yes, sir. Call yourselves the GPS Force. Because we do a lot more than that. Laser satellite trackers, commercial space surveillance systems, space debris removing satellites, and refueling spacecraft all will have and conduct legitimate civilian missions. Unfortunately, these same systems can be flipped to conduct anti-satellite missions, including damaging, defueling, and repositioning targeted satellites. Russia and China will always be portrayed as aggressive. We can cooperate and work together to achieve our goals. Uh, he's making very clear, he's sending a message uh, to the West, to the world, where his priorities lie. His priority is ideology. And he and Vladimir Putin share uh, the belief that the world order as it has existed, you know, ensured by the United States, is a world order that needs to change. Uh, they believe that the system of democracy, the cultural liberalism, uh, is, is a disgrace. And they want to see the world uh, aligned more the way that their countries are, where they are controlled very heavily uh, by the government. And so this is about, uh, you know, combining the powers of these two nuclear armed authoritarian superpowers uh, and, and using using that combined power uh, to shape the course of of the world order. This is their mission, as they've called it, their no limits partnership. Just a couple of months ago, the Russians fired a missile. Now, they shot their own satellite, but they destroyed a satellite that was in orbit. And they did that to demonstrate both to the United States and our allies that they had the capability to take out satellites. China has the means and has had the means for a long time to disable our satellites, either with direct ascent weapons that actually destroy them, with on-orbit capabilities that involved electronic warfare and directed energy. China has developed a space weapon that can creep into the tailpipes of enemy satellites where it would grab on and hide, waiting for the right time to blow up. They, they've created a space weapon that attaches itself to the inside of an enemy satellite's booster exhaust cone. They say that the weapon is designed to fit snugly in the exhaust cones of the gas boosters that move satellites around. Once inside the booster chamber, the probe would expand to keep the device firmly attached and hidden inside the exhaust cone. The device can then wait for a long time before it detonates a special melt-cast explosive that burns slowly, simulating an engine malfunction and severely damaging the satellite. As the U.S. military has already voiced concerns about China's Shijian-17, an experimental probe with a robotic arm that has conducted some unusual maneuvers since its launch in 2016. I think China is is developing weapons in space. They're moving in that direction. They see it as a as a area where they can compete with us. Um, and, and should we go to conflict where they would they would aggressively uh, come after us? Policies regarding threats to space systems, any effective unified doctrine or norm, diplomatic response, legal framework to an attack on an allied space asset, we must agree is simply out of this space. Literally. Just how wild is the situation in space? Well, um, uh, first of all, let me say that um, there aren't really an agreed to international set of standards and norms of behavior that are expected in space. The Space Force is the new sheriff in town. How do you keep law and order in that kind of situation? We are not the sheriff in town. We are a military force. The uh, other nations, especially China, especially Russia, 
Do they listen to us in that area? Um, there are conversations ongoing. They put forward proposals as well, so do we, but uh, things have not proceeded very, uh, very far in the recent past. When we talk about what would constitute a conflict in space, how does the U.S. see it? And there's a range of threats from reversible jamming to kinetic destruction, and we're prepared to handle and respond to any of those threats that might appear. Three countries that are adversaries on land will never have a comprehensive plan in space. In the meantime, Trigger Happy United States, already training its Space Force, plan mock missions and simulate space combat operations that can be used in real conflict. With new space combat tactics, the only question is not if, but when and where. Does the United States have the anti-satellite weapons to deter China or Russia, or if necessary, to defeat them? I'd really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you in a classified environment on the specific details. Very good. Behind this razor-wired fence in Colorado, a highly classified Space Force asset. Under heavy armed guard, this 18-wheeler packed with high-value satellite comms is one of several mobile command centers poised to roll out in the event of a doomsday attack that would target U.S. military satellite control. If you need to, how fast can you move these trucks out? The specific timelines are classified, but what I can say is a matter of hours. If you've liked what you've seen in today's program, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Reportify Media.